Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today, I've been asked to make a net for a Roman legionary to use as part of his marching pack. There are illustrations of these, but we don't know exactly what they were for. Maybe they're for carrying a water bottle. Maybe they're for carrying things like loaves of bread or things that have been foraged en route. Either way, a net bag is always a useful addition to your gear. Net making doesn't have to be a difficult craft. We're going to be making a very straightforward net bag. It's going to start from a central loop and I'm going to work it in a seamless spiral. This is one of the easiest ways to make a net. It's very practical. So you just need a good twine. Now I'm using a ready-made cord, but this is a perfect thing to do with homemade cordage. And I've chosen quite a robust, pure linen twine. This is going to make a really nice, heavy net. And you need some simple tools. Now you can just use a wound up hank of thread and your fingers as a gauge, but it always goes better if you've got something to measure out the distances evenly. So a netting shuttle can be as simple as a piece of wood with some dents in the end. This is my favourite one. It's made of bone, unfortunately. It's got a little chip there, but that's not going to stop it working. I've loaded it up with lots of twine, and then you're going to need something to help set the gauge and the gauge are the spaces in the net. Now I quite like this bone folder. Again, a little piece of wood will do just as well. In fact, I might use a piece of wood today. Let's use a piece of wood today. Your gauge stick is going to represent about half the size of the final hole. So just bear that in mind when you choose it. Tidy away the bits we don't need and we'll make some net. We've got our tools together, we've got a gauge stick, we've got a netting shuttle loaded with cord, and we've got a nice long end. I'm going to start by making a loop. This is going to become the centre of the bottom of the net. So this loop needs to be able to move because we'll pull it up later and I've left a long end. I'm going to use that to tie off the net while I'm working on it. I'm going to use my gauge stick and what I want to be doing is working clove hitches. So I'm going to bring my netting shuttle up through the loop back down to the loop that it makes. Now just keep an eye on that first loop that you're making, an extra finger in there won't hurt. That's making the first half of our clove hitch. Now just adjust this so it fits neatly round your gauge stick. Now I need to finish the other half of the clove hitch, so I'm going to go in through the top of my loop, And that should make a clove hitch. Okay, the second one should be a little bit easier. We've got a little bit of tension on here now. You should still find that your starting loop moves. Don't worry about that first end loop. So we're coming over our gauge stick, coming up through the loop, back down through the knot underneath. That's one half. Just bring that up gently snug. Then I'm going to put my needle in through the top of the loop, back through itself. And there's the clove hitch. Always takes a couple just to get a feel for how you're holding your hands and how it's all settling in. I'll do a couple more of these. So we're coming over the gauge stick, up through the loop, back down through the big loop that you've just made. 
pull that up, get gauge. Getting gauge is making sure it's nice and snug around the gauge stick. Sometimes it helps just to pop your thumb on this to make sure it doesn't slip. And then you're going to go into the loop from the top, pull it back through the loop you've made, pull that up nice and snug. Now I probably want to make, oh I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 of these going around. So I'll just do this quite quickly now. Get engage. Finishing the clove hitch. You can adjust this loop at any time so that it's manageable for you. So over the gauge stick, through from the base, pick up that loop that you just made. That's one half of your knot. Through the top, picking up your loop again, finish the clove hitch. Through from the bottom, oh, forgot to pick up my loop. Through from the top. There are lots of different ways of forming nets and making knots with a netting needle. So if one person's method doesn't work for you, do check others. But I find this is quite straightforward. As you can move along, it doesn't matter if some of your stitches drop off your gauge. Just adjust that loop periodically if you need to, to make sure that you've got a comfortable working position. So just to recap, we've got a number of loops on the go. I'll just work one more for you. Thread comes over the gauge. Come through your centre loop from below, come back down through the loop that you've just made. Pull that up to get gauge. I tend to bring the thread over the top of the gauge again. Put your needle in through the top of the gauge this time. Come back up through your loop. That makes a clove hitch. I'll just finish this bit off and I'll join you in a few moments when I've worked the whole 20. So I'm nearly done with my starting ring. I think I mentioned earlier that I was aiming for somewhere between 12 and 20 stitches. I think I've decided in the end on 16. So I've got 15 already on here. I'm just about to work the last one. So over the top of the gauge stick, up through from the bottom, pick up that loop to make one half of your clove stitch. Get gauge, get that nice and snug and then in through the top of the loop, back through, that should make 16. So I'll take my gauge stick out, spread this out, find my loose end. Now if I pull this up nice and steadily, of course it's got fairly tight now but that's alright, that should with a little bit of a wriggle. Let me pull up into a ring. Now, this is quite a hairy string, so it's taking a little bit of encouragement to ease things along. If you're working with a modern string, something like a paracord, this will pull extremely easily. But this, there we go. So we're going to ease that round into a daisy shape. Now for my next row I want to increase very very slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work two stitches into the first loop, one stitch into the second, two stitches into the third, one to the fourth and so on from there. Let's just move things out of the way that we don't. Oh that's a tail. That was a loose thread there. Now I want to work in, well for me an anti-clockwise direction feels quite a nice way of doing things, but it doesn't really matter if you prefer to work clockwise. In a bit I'll be able to tie off this loose end to give me something to, to tension again, but I'm not going to worry for the moment. The first stitch is always a little bit bodged if you like, because we're coming all the way down and that's going to make 
of a half stitch here. But the principle's the same regardless. We're going to come over the gauge stick, we're going to pick up our first stitch. We're going to get gauge. Now this is a slightly different stitch from here on in. We were making clove hitches on the top, now we want to make a netting knot, which is a sheet bend, I think. I'll double check that, I think it's a sheet bend. So we've come through, we've got gauge. I tend to put my thumb just on the top. What we need to do is get our knot to lock exactly on that point. And for me, the easiest motion is to come right behind the two legs of the stitch, come up through, drop your netting needle back through the loop you've made. So just check what's going on. You've got a loop that's coming round. You've got gauge. We want this knot to pop just onto the very, very end. There we go. That's excellent. Now, because this is my first loop, I want to make two stitches into it. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Thread comes over the top of the gauge, come up into the middle of the stitch that you're working into. Get gauge. Come behind both legs. Back down through. Aha, a supervisory catch. Hello, Coro. As long as she doesn't actually come and sit on my work, that will be absolutely fine. The next stitch, we're only going to put one into. So, thread comes over the gauge, comes up through the middle of the loop. My netting needle is quite full at the moment. I don't want to join in sooner than I have to, so it can be a bit tight at first. Get gauge. Can you see how the gauge stick is making half the size of the square? come behind both legs of the stitch, go back down through the loop that you've made, pop it onto the top. Doesn't matter if you take off extra stitches as you go. So loop three I want to put two into. Over the top of the gauge stitch, stick, up through the middle, Round the back of it, that's one stitch. Now I'm going to do it again into exactly the same place. Over the top of the gauge stick. Come on, miss. Uh, up through the loop. Round the back. Pick up the loop. I'll finish going round the edge preferably without the help of the cat, and then we'll see where we've got to. So, I haven't got rid of the cat, but I have managed to work all the way around the outside, working two into one stitch, one into the next, which has now given me 24 stitches in total. And I'm back round to the start. There's that slightly funny sized stitch that we had. Now from here on in, I think I'm just gonna go round and do one stitch in each, see how it looks. So the principle's exactly the same come over the top of the gauge stick, pick up the next available loop, which is a slightly odd one. Don't worry too much if that's not quite a comfortable fit. We'll just make that the best we can. Put your thumb on it, come under both legs. Get that other loop out of the way. Back down through your loop. Pull that up onto the edge so that first stitch is sometimes just a bit tricky and then from here on in it's just one stitch into each. Drop off the edge of the gauge stick as you need to. I'll just do a few for you and then we'll cut through towards the end. So get gauge, round the back, through the loop. From here on in it's going to be a lot easier because your stitches are the right size. has conveniently gone away which means I can carry on uninterrupted. If you put things down at any point all you need to do is pop your gauge stick back through a couple of your meshes so you can see where you are. Thread over the top, make sure that your 
netting shuttle's got enough loose thread on it, otherwise it gets awkward. Up through the next loop from the bottom. Oh, it is an occupational hazard getting slight snarls of thread. You just gotta watch out for those. Get gauge. Pop your thumb on the top, behind both legs of the stitch, through, down. I'll do one more and then I'll do a few more rounds and show you how it's looking. Get gauge, thumb to stop it sliding, shuttle behind both legs of your stitch, up through, back down, try and pop that the surface. From here on in you're just working in spirals. If you decide in a rose time that you need to make the base wider you just put in some double stitches again. Work them fairly evenly around the outside so I've got 24 stitches on the go at the moment so perhaps I might put one in every four if I thought I needed it but I'm going to see how this bag looks. We're not aiming for something huge. It's a little carrying bag that would hold a water bottle or some loaves of bread or some forage. Of course you could use it for absolutely anything else but that's what this particular one's going to be used for. Okay, make a little bit of progress on this. Um, I've now got this thread tied off to something convenient. Just gives me something to pull against. That little bit of tension does help in keeping things organised. I shall be back in a moment. I'm probably about a third of the way through my net now and as you can see it's behaving really nicely. That 24 stitch circumference is probably plenty. However, I've just run out of thread. This isn't a problem. I've loaded up my shuttle with fresh and it is just a case of making a secure knot. There are lots and lots of knots and I'm sure there are some that are probably better than others but I usually find something straightforward and then what I tend to do is go over the new knot with the tail of the old thread. Those bits can be clipped off later and we can continue. Generally when you've got to this stage everything behaves quite nicely. I just shorten that. Generally, once you've got a fair bit of work underway, it all behaves quite nicely. Same principle as before, thread comes over the top, pick up the loop in the row above, get gauge, pop your thumb on it, under both edges, down through the loop, avoiding the cat. I don't know why she likes net making so much, she often supervises when I'm working. So I'm about a third of the way through. I reckon it's taken an hour so far. I'll do a bit more and I'll come back to you when we're nearly finished. I've very nearly finished this bag now. The beauty of a net bag works in the round in a spiral pattern like this is that you really just keep working until the size is right. You don't need a pattern, you just keep going. As soon as I've got this to the length that I think is going to be appropriate, and it's going to be about two and a half, three hours work in total by the time I get to that stage, I'm going to finish off the last loop of thread. I'm going to thread a strong cord through all of these live loops all the way around. That's going to make the drawstring. And because I'm working with a natural fibre, this is a linen cord, I always find that a very quick wash in cool water just settles everything in. It always gives a better finish afterwards. I'll hang it to dry with a light weight inside it and then this will be ready to go off to be added to our Legionaries backpack. Of course you could be making a shopping bag, you could be making a kit bag for bushcraft, you could be making a storage bag for onions or something in the greenhouse. It doesn't really matter what your end result is and it doesn't really matter whether you're working with a bought thread or some cordage you've made earlier. Netting is a really really nice way of using cordage. I'll just do one or two more stitches just to recap the stitch for you. So thread comes over the top of your gauge stick, it comes up underneath through the loop you're going into, pull it tight, get gauge. I always put my thumb on top. 
Now you're going to go behind the two legs of the stitch, pick up the loop that you've just made, pop it down on top. And that should be just about there. My net is finished. I've just rinsed it and I've hung it to dry. My little Roman jug seemed like quite a good thing to weight it with. That will just help pull everything nicely into shape and then it'll behave really well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do consider subscribing to our channel. We've got loads more videos planned and hopefully you'll find something of interest. Do let me know how you get on with your netting.